Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be sharing some makeup products that have grown on me. They are growers, not showers. These are products that I maybe didn't like initially and then grew to appreciate, learned to love for one reason or another or products that I did like originally but again for one reason or another I've really learned to love and adore them. I think this is a good lesson that sometimes makeup products need more than one or two tries and we should go back to products every now and then and try and learn how to get the most out of them so that at least we can get some use out of products that we're kind of stuck with. So without further ado, let's get stuck. So you may or may not know this, but in the UK, it is incredibly rare to be able to return makeup. It's not something that is common here. Most, I'd say 99%, 95% of retailers, whether online or in-store, will not allow you to return makeup products that you have even opened, let alone used. At least in the US, as far as I understand it, it's a much easier thing to return makeup that you have used. Here, really the only place that I know of that accepts like lightly used makeup returns is Space NK, which is amazing. And I have actually done that before, returned a product that I didn't get along with to Space NK and it was very easy and they genuinely did you know allow and accept me to return and get a full refund on an exchange or a gift certificate but they fully refunded because I didn't get along with the product. But it's rare, typically we're stuck with our makeup products here so we sometimes have to learn to love them or learn to appreciate them. Some products need a bit of a learning curve. Some of them like appreciate with age and some you just change your mind about. So I'm here to share 10 such items with you that have greatly increased in how much I enjoy and appreciate them for varying different reasons in the hope that it inspires us to give our makeup a bit more of a chance, particularly me. Content creators in general, we don't get a lot of time to consider stuff, you know, we're always on to the next thing, something new, something new, something new. So if in your mind you didn't love something, it's likely to go into a drawer and never be used again. And that's criminal. So I'm here to do better, to try harder, to love products that maybe didn't do it for me the first few times, but I've come back to now in the hopes it inspires somebody. So first up, I'm gonna talk about something that I did like. I did like it very much the first time I used it, but it's gone from like a like a seven or an eight to a 155 out of 10. It's Lisa Aldridge's Sorcery. This may surprise you that I've included this here, but this is one of these products that I think the first time I used it, probably because it was like review slash demo reasons, I used like the whole palette and I liked it, but when you see this product and you think of me using every color in here, it's going to be quite a colorful, you know, vibrant greeny blue look, which isn't something I do that often. And as much as I love and appreciate the unique color story and shades in here, using this entire palette is not something that I would typically do on a very regular basis. But with a bit of playing around with this palette, I found several looks that I love and will happily and joyfully wear every day of my life. So this wasn't about me not liking the palette or the color story, it was about the entire color story overall being a bit scary and daunting for me like every day and then finding ways to use this that really fit like my comfort zone and my happiness and what I love and appreciate about makeup. So these days, like nine times out of 10 when I use this palette, if you see me posting a look with this, this is what I will have done. I will have used the green matte very lightly as like a transition shade in the crease and maybe the outer third. And then typically I will use the green shimmer on the top, like and the center of my lid and then this shade towards the front and then this will go like in my inner corner. Sometimes I'll use a little bit of these two together on kind of the outer part of my eye. This one always goes all over my lid. I also just like doing these two shades together, stunning. And this shade also as a one and done shadow, maybe a bit of bronzer in the crease, maybe just sort of blended up into the crease. Those are kind of the two or three different ways 
that I've absolutely adored and it's become, you know, probably fourth or fifth or maybe like top 10 eyeshadow palettes to it might possibly even be my favourite ever competing with Pat McGrath. So yeah, this one went from like, I really like it to I can't live without it. I'm obsessed with it. I want to live with it and call it my wife or something along those lines that's more normal. Next up, let's talk about the Hermes bronzer. Something very different to the sorcery scenario happened with the Hermes bronzer, and that is I found a different shade. So when I first acquired this before it officially launched, the only shade that I could get was Atlas, which was very warm and too light really for me to use. And then when it launched, I purchased the shade CN, which was two up from Atlas and it was just too dark and I wasn't going to purchase any more. So I liked the formula, it was a like, I enjoyed it. I wanted to hate it because of the price point, but I didn't, I really liked it. But I just felt like everything was too warm for me and none of the colors or the shades that I had tried were quite doing it for me. And then I waited for the refills to be available because I didn't want to buy another full component bronzer when I already had two and I wasn't 100% convinced it was that special. And then the refills launched and I picked up the shade Sahara, which is shade number, is it? Three, I think, uh, the one between the two that I had, and it was more neutral, the right sort of level of pigmentation, the right level of depth for my skin tone, still very buildable and beautiful, soft, natural finish, but really perfect for my skin tone, perfect undertone, less warm than the two shades that I tried previously. And you see how buildable it is? You can just bronze all day with it. And I've really come to love it. It gives me that sculpted bronze that I really appreciate. And it gives me such a natural bit of color. I can use this shade summer and winter, which I really like because it is so buildable, so natural on the skin, so pretty. I love the undertone, which isn't as orangey as Atlas or as red as CN. It's just perfect. So now that bronzer went from being like, mm, don't really use it to mm, love it, top drawer location. I kind of wish things had gone the other way to be honest, but it is what it is. You know, it's annoying because if you find a bronzer that you really, really like the formula, but the color's not there, it really just ruins the whole thing for you. But you know, it's often not an option for me and lots of us here in the UK to go and swatch products from these brands who really aren't in store anywhere outside ma the major cities or most of them just London. So yeah, it's tricky because color, undertone, shade can really ruin a product that you'd other otherwise really, really love. So it's all Always worth swatching things if you can but like I said I can't generally but that was made a massive difference to me it was something I wasn't really going to use anymore until I found that perfect shade next up the Tom Ford st I want stick concealer are we saying is that what we're calling this the cream concealer stick stick it's a stick right it's this one is what I'm saying. This concealer I used a few times when I was sort of reviewing it and gathering my thoughts and I liked it, but I did find it to crease a little bit more than I was loving. And so therefore it just kind of went into the drawer and I didn't think I would ever see the light of day again. And then I went on my holidays, I went on a trip and I thought I was trying to pack lots of sticks, travel friendly items. So I thought, you know, what the heck, it doesn't matter, it's only my family that's going to see me, they couldn't care less what I look like. So I took this concealer, knowing it wasn't terrible or bad, but it wasn't my favourite, but it was maybe less likely to break or, you know, smash and make a big liquidy mess like the rest of my concealers. So I took this on holiday and fell in love with it, okay? I can't lie to you. One, I just love that it doesn't need setting, So I, because I didn't take powder either, again, for fear of the smashing. I'm paranoid, you might think, but it happens, you know, powder smash. So I take very few of them whenever I go anywhere. So I wasn't setting it with powder, I was just tapping it in. I didn't have any problems whatsoever with creasing. It wore beautifully and it was such a beautiful natural finish that it immediately put it way back on my radar. The only thing I can really think was different was that one, I was using my fingers to tap it out and that can really help products. I'm not a fan of doing it, but in a pinch, 
I don't mind so much. I think I was probably also using less because, you know, I was on holiday, I was quick, I was rushing, I wasn't sort of swiping a lot on, I was doing a little amount of very natural makeup. So that whole trip just literally sold it to me and now I really enjoy it. And it's my go-to whenever I go anywhere because it's so travel friendly and it is perfect for touch-ups. I'm not really someone who does touch-ups because I'm lazy, but, if you do, it's a really ideal little stick to have in your purse and it looks very chic also. That is definitely one that went from I'll never use it again to back into like my regular rotation. Next, let's talk about the lipstick I'm wearing today and I'm going to forewarn you, this is a tragic tale. It's a very sad story, okay? Brace yourselves, get a tissue. I just went through my lipstick drawer at the weekend because I wanted to wear something that was not a Dior Addict and not a Lisa Aldridge lipstick. I wanted to mix it up for once. I opened my drawer and I thought, I'm gonna try one of those Sisley lipsticks again. I put it on, I think it was the shade Sheer Coral that I used and I was, why have I not been using these? Literally for, like since I got them, I, they've barely been used, barely been on my lips. I loved it, it was so luscious and juicy. I'm wearing a different one today, this is sheer chilli. And then what happened is I lost it that day. I lost that lipstick that I got to wear that one time. And I was just getting thinking, I'm gonna wear this all the time now. And then I lost it. <laughs> And I enjoyed it so much that I literally got home and bought two more and then I'm wearing a different one today. I think the thing that happened with these is they came out at the same time as like the YSL Candy Glaze and the Dior Addicts and they just got lost in the melee, okay? There was a buying frenzy when those two formulas arrived, particularly the Dior Addicts and I just like had blinkers on those lipsticks for whatever well, since let's be honest, ever since I've barely considered or thought or looked at something that wasn't Dior Addicts or Lisa Aldridge lipsticks. And these just got forgotten about. I feel like if they'd come out a few months before or after those lip products, they would have stood out a lot more to me. So it's not that they are better than those, but I've just really been appreciating them. They feel so nice and creamy. They're more opaque than the Dior Addicts but they aren't quite as shiny as the YSL Candy Glaze is. They're really lovely. I like that they're a bit more wearable for a casual day because they aren't so opaque and they are very flexible. Just like the Lisa Aldridge Luxuriously Lucent, these are sort of very buildable and tailorable to how much color you want. So yeah, and I love the bullets, they're glorious. So yeah, I, de I definitely did not give those enough of a chance among many other releases is what happened there and more fool me. Next up, the Benefit Roller Lash Mascara. I liked this when it first launched, but then I think again, it was followed by all these other mascara releases. And I, you know, you don't keep a load of different mascaras in stock like you do foundations or concealers because they go bad or they run out very quickly or they dry up. So you don't keep 20 or I don't keep 20 in stock or rotation all of the time. You know, I only repurchase a couple and there's always new ones coming out. So I think I just forgot how much I loved it. And then I decided to give it an another go, just randomly, out of the blue. And I've barely put it down since. It really pushed my Charlotte Tilbury, actually, for like top spot for a while. And I still think now I'd pick the Charlotte Tilbury over this, but it's a very close second now on my list of mascaras. I think another thing that happened is, you know, the results of my lash serum kicked in, and gave me luscious natural lashes of dreams. And so now I don't need such a dramatic mascara to get the effect that I want. And this one isn't as big fat lashes as a lot of other mascaras that I was using prior to my lash serum coming along. So now this does what I need it to do and it ends up with such a beautiful, fluttery, separated, lifted lash look with my longer lashes that I absolutely love and adore it now. And I hadn't even purchased it or had it in my possession for years after it launched. So that was quite the comeback roller lash. Well done. Next up, let's talk about this Dior Mahogany, is it called that? Yes, Mahogany Blush. Now, if you watched my review where I first tried this blush for the first time, it was somewhat 
disastrous, some would say. It's obviously very rich and deep for my skin tone. And I started off okay. I started off with a light little dusting. And then I thought, <laughs> let's build it up. And build it up I did. And not in a good way. It went very south very quickly. It went patchy. It went hideously unblendable and muddy looking. Okay, and I thought, well, that's going in the bin. That's what I thought. I never want to look like this again. It's clearly too rich for my skin tone. But then a few days later, I braved it again. And I tried it with just a very fluffy light brush, my Sonia G Lotus Cheek, that picks up a small amount of blush. And this time I learned, don't try and build it up. Just leave it alone, for goodness sake. And it's chocolatey, warm, chestnuts by the fire, delightful. It's what it is. And now I've fallen in love with it. It's beautiful, particularly for the cooler months when you want to look warm and chocolatey and inviting. I don't know if you do want to look inviting. Probably that's a mistake, but you know what I mean. And this was all about user error and user learning. And now this user has learned to use this and it's fantastic. So that's definitely a lesson for me that my heavy hands can sometimes mislead me into thinking a product is not for me, whereas actually I just need to try harder <laughs> and calm down and things can look delightful. Okay, so next up is the Hourglass Jellyfish palette from Holiday this year. So this is quite a recent product and not one that I disliked. It's just that this went from being like one of, not one of my least favorites, but an average one of these. You know, I own a lot of these palettes from Hourglass. I buy them almost every year. You know, I took an Hourglass break a couple of years ago, but I've pretty much bought at least one of these palettes every year. So this one just went in the you know, also ran pile. My favorite ever, I think, is the Tiger palette. I preferred the Snake palette originally to this one. Those are the two that I picked up this year. But literally this week, I picked this up and used this for the first time probably since my review because I've been favoring the Snake palette. And I think maybe the reason just being that this has an existing blush shade in here. And so I just think of it as being like, mm, not that exciting. It's diffused heat. That's the existing blush shade. That's the only repeat, I think that and the finishing powder. So this has two repeats. Snake had one. So again, that appeals to me more that there's less repeat shades. Four new shades in here. But this week I used this for the first time, like I said, since the review, and I just loved how it looked. I used it again today, the bronzer, the highlighter, and this blush up here, and I just really love how this overall effect turned out. I think the second reason why I've started loving this so much more than when I initially like used it was that my skin tone is definitely moving towards my winter skin tone more now than when these first came out I was still sort of in my summer skin tone and this just suits me better when I'm less tanned in my review the highlighter definitely left left a bit of a cast on me because I was more tanned from the summer and so it just didn't really work I couldn't use the finishing powders they were too light so all in all, the snake just worked and looked better on me at that time. Now we're moving into winter and my skin tone is lightening. I need to remember those products I tried in summer that were too light for me. I definitely want to go back as well to the Charlotte Tilbury Holiday Blush and Highlighter Duos. I'll need a few more weeks <laughs> before the lighter shade of that won't leave a cast or won't be too light for my skin tone. But this overall effect with the bronzer especially is so beautiful and I really can build it up and it stays quite neutral and it's just a perfect everyday quite understated look and it's really surprised me I can now really see this becoming maybe even like my most used my most reached for out of the last few years palettes you know the sculpture and the unlocked palettes are really quite old now and should probably be retired tiger and snake are both better on me in the summer because they are really rich they are the deepest palettes I feel like this will be my most used going forwards because it's just so wearable and flattering 
on my more winter skin tone and yeah it's really surprised me that I sort of picked it back up and have really been enjoying it because it is just so pretty and it works beautifully now on my lighter skin tone. So it's a really important reminder to me, specifically this girl, that stuff that I didn't love in summer, pick it up again in winter and vice versa because my skin tone changes so much that products may work on me that didn't and vice versa. Next up, the Tom Ford Stick Foundation. This is one of these foundations that's been out for years. I'd never tried it. I was super curious about it. I love both the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate and I really appreciate the Tom Ford Soft Matte Foundation. It was really the only Tom Ford foundation I've never really tried. So I thought I should try it. And initially, the thing is, about this. I don't like sticks. I don't like stick concealers. I don't like stick foundations. I don't like stick blushes or bronzers necessarily, mostly for the most part. And so it's just that it's the process. I reject it. And I rejected it when I first picked this foundation up. The swiping on and then, you know, it's a little stiffer than a liquid to blend out. You kind of need to do things slightly differently. And I don't want to, I don't like change. I am stuck in my ways, old dog, new tricks, all that stuff, okay? So yeah, I tried it and I was like, I just don't like sticks. I don't like the process. I, I want a liquid, I want to stick to my liquid. And then again, just like this little cheeky number, I took this on holiday with me. And the amazing thing about this is I took two shades and it took up like less room, two of these than one bottle of foundation. Also, you know, a more travel friendly component again I would never take my shade and illuminate on holiday are you mad definitely not whereas I was able to take two of these which meant that you know as I picked up some tan on holiday I could just switch over I could mix and match the two shades it wasn't going to get smashed or anything like that in my suitcase so it sort of started to be something that I enjoyed and as I was using it like every time I did my makeup while I was on holiday I just found the application process less and less off-putting because that is normally something that I just don't like about stick foundations I'd prefer a little pump on a tray and you know the liquid application process appeals to me more but I started to just not mind it because I was getting used to it and just getting used to how to apply and how much to apply where I wanted to place it and I grew to love and appreciate it it's very natural it's got a gorgeous luminosity it wore really nicely under you know hot humid weather and it looked beautiful in photos as well so yeah this one definitely grew from like I'm just taking this because it's travel friendly to I'm actually really enjoying this and now I even wear this at home and it's in my top foundation drawer so that was quite the turnaround I have to pat myself on the back for that one next up let's talk about the house labs concealer this is one that in my sort of first impressions video I liked but I was like mm, it's not going to topple like my favorite concealers though because it slightly creased in that review and I was like oh well you know my favorites don't crease my Huda my Pat McGrath don't crease the new Gucci one has less coverage but it doesn't crease it's kind of more flattering in that area because it's much more natural and therefore it was just going to probably go into my also rans drawer and I wasn't really going to use it again but I kept using it like I always do so that I could give more comprehensive thoughts in my roundup my monthly roundup video and it was growing on me and what it was was I just really started to enjoy the extra coverage I really felt like it just looked so much more flawless to have my under eye darkness just completely gone and with a really small amount of product I changed my shade again that made a massive difference in my review I was using a shade that was very stark and harsh and too light for me so I went up a couple of shades that really helps it makes a massive difference if you get the right shade of something so that really did make a big difference and I think having that different shade I was able to use it, you know, more strategically, use less. I now know to blend out with the brush to keep the coverage and then go over with the sponge and then I don't get any creasing. And so now I think it's probably my new holy grail. 
it went from me thinking it's gonna not going to make it into my top five to me thinking, I think this is my most favourite concealer now. And it is definitely the one that at the moment I am reaching for the most out of all of my concealers. So again, didn't hate it, but thought it's just okay to holy grail status. And that really was just solely from using it, continuing to use it, trial and error, changing the shade and bingo bongo. And lastly, but by no means leastly, my little Star Wars single eyeshadow from Pat McGrath. And I know this is going to be very annoying because it's a limited edition number that has long gone as far as I know, but I hope and pray this will come back one day, a little poem. It's been a while since we had a free poem, hasn't it? Now, I think I know what happened with this and it's a common problem for content creators that I'm now aware of, I'm on the lookout for, and it is using products only on one half for review purposes. That's what happened. When I first used this eyeshadow, so this was from the Star Wars collection, Smuggler's Spice, I bought two shades of these single eyeshadows. This was one of them. And in the video, I did, you know, one on one eye, one on the other to see the shades. And it's not that I didn't like it, but I was just like, you know, sure, it's really pretty and it is. That shift is utterly delightful and it's so smooth and sheeny it's glorious very very pretty but I really didn't get like the full effect of it because I only had it on one eye that's what I've come to notice it's the reason why I don't really do side by side videos anymore because I find it really matters that you do both sides because I don't know about you but I'm not perfectly symmetrical my eyes are not exactly the same shape and size this side of my face is not exactly the same as this as far as discoloration and things like that so I feel like when you do a half and half of anything eyeshadow cheek products foundation primers anything it's not really as fair of a test as it seems and when it comes to like eyeshadow or cheek products I really you really need to say it see it on both sides I've noticed to get the full effect and to really see how much you like something how much it suits you what it would really look like because most of the time we're not going around with one with two different eyes well I actually am <laughs> almost always but but most people <laughs> usually don't so that's what I found as soon as I like wore it a couple more times on both of my eyes I fell head over heels in love with it and I think this is my favorite single eyeshadow that I own and have ever used it's so pretty it's very eye-catching again it's something I get a lot of questions and a lot of compliments on whenever I wear it or post about it and people are crushed that it is gone we need to launch a campaign to get it back please it's glorious I can't find a dupe for it and I have tried and it's just super pretty very very summery as well a perfect one for holiday it's glorious and yeah sometimes it's worth especially for me remembering to do both sides of your face with something before you make a call on it you know words to live by. So there you have it. Those are 10 makeup products that I have had a complete change of heart about that have really grown into my cockles that have really warmed up to. <laughs> you know, please let me know if there's any makeup products that you have found yourself really growing to love that you didn't like initially or that you just thought were okay and that have turned into holy grails and how and why this happened. I think it's so interesting. And I know I'm not the only one. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.